So Shelley, he was born into the aristocracy, he went to Eton, he went to Oxford, he was rich, but he was known as a pamphleteer. Uh, and pamphlets were the equivalent today, I suppose, of tweets, and the, the, the following people have. Uh, um, and he, he was massively uh, followed. When he got to Oxford, the first uh, one he published was called The Necessity of Atheism which he had pinned to every church door and indeed the bishop's palace. He was expelled from university. His father disowned him. Uh, but he, he, he carried on with a gathering following because somehow he, he had his uh, finger on, on the pulse of an active movement for change uh, in England. The authorities, the establishment, saw him as a seditious person who should be put under watch. Later, there were those who wanted him uh, tried for treason, capital offence, locked up in the tower. That's one of the reasons he was always on the move through, through Europe. I'll tell you what I wrote in my preface about Shelley. I'm setting the scene where I just come here from the cemetery. There too I communed at the grave of Shelley, the great Pied Piper of my teenage 70s punk anti-establishment, free-loving, free-spirited, drama student self. Well, that was, um, uh, you can see how easily I connected with, um, with Shelley. Is uh, considered to be Shelley's great masterpiece. Um, when he heard the news of Keats' death, he, he wasn't s surprised, he, he, he'd known it was inevitable, but he felt this tremendous grief and tremendous anger at the people who had um, dismissed him uh, during his lifetime, who hadn't seen the genius which he, Shelley, had, had seen. Um, and he wrote this uh, elegy, it's called Adonais, he gives him, Keats the name Adonais because of his interest in the classical world. It's a heroic name, Adonais, an elegy on the death of John Keats. But he doesn't just eulogize and celebrate John Keats. He eulogizes and celebrates himself, for he too would be dead within a few months of writing this um, great poem. It's a long poem, again, uh, but I've chosen four stanzas um, which express it. Adonais. Peace, peace, he is not dead, he doth not sleep. He hath awakened from the dream of life. Tis we who, lost in stormy visions, keep with phantoms an unprofitable strife and in mad trance strike with our spirit's knife invulnerable nothings. We decay like corpses in a charnel. Fear and grief convulse us and consume us day by day, and cold hopes swarm like worms within our living clay. Go thou to Rome, at once the paradise, the grave, the city, and the wilderness, and where its wrecks like shattered mountains rise, and flowering weeds and fragrant copses dress the bones of desolation's nakedness, pass till the spirit of the spot shall lead thy footsteps to a slope of green access, where, like an infant's smile over the dead, a light of laughing flowers along the grass is spread. That light whose smile kindles the universe, that beauty in which all things work and move, that benediction which the eclipsing curse of birth can quench not, that sustaining love which through the web of being blindly wove by man and beast and earth and air and sea burns bright consuming the last clouds of cold mortality. The breath whose might I have invoked in song descends on me 
My spirit's bark is driven far from the shore, far from the trembling throng whose sails were never to the tempest given. The massy earth and sphered skies are riven. I am born darkly, fearfully afar, while burning through the inmost veil of heaven, the soul of Adonais, like a star, beckons from the abode where the eternal are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.